Good evening and welcome to episode 5 of Adventures in Haskell. Today we're going to take our calculator from episode 2 and using the stuff that we learned in episodes 3 and 4 with the BF parser and interpreter we're going to build a parse tree for our expressions and extend it to expect statements and then uh, we're going to write an interpreter for those so that we get back to where we were before and then hopefully if we have time we're going to extend our calculator with variable assignments so that we can remember values and use them later in expressions. So to begin we're going to put together a parse tree type so let's write an expression definition and an expression definition is either going to be um, well, let's uh, let's be quite clear here. We could be a constant, so let's have a constant, uh, which will be a double, or it could be uh, an addition, which will take two expressions, or a subtraction, or a division. Well, so let's put a multiplication or a division uh, or a modulus uh, it could also be a negation which just takes a single expression and for now I think that will do let's uh, derive show from that so that we can do stuff with it a little bit later then we're going to define a statement and the only statement type that we're going to define for now is um, I'm going to call it a print statement which is going to take an expression and it's going to show that expression so we have uh, got our statement we've got our expression so now let's change our uh, parsers so that we generate this data structure instead so parse number instead of producing a double is going to produce an expression and we can immediately see that we're having trouble but that's okay because we can stick constant in there and we can stick constant in there and we've already fixed parse number so we don't need double mod because well that's not interesting to us at this point and now is somewhere where we really start to see the power of the expression parser from um, the uh, text.parsec.expra uh, module. Uh, sorry, I'm flicking around. Let me try not to. And we're going to parse an expression out of our expression parser. And we can immediately look. And uh, all we need to do is return a function which is going to take an expression and give an expression in the case of the infix sorry the prefix operation so negation takes an expression gives an expression ID will take the expression and give it straight back so that our prefix plus still works and we just need to return a multiplication or a division modulus addition and subtraction uh, uh, negation is meant to be a double goes to double actual type is an expression goes to expression uh, oh terms are doubles at the moment which isn't good parse term should be an expression there we go we either get an expression or a number out and again parse input now parse input is going to end up being a um, a print statement because I, that's what we want so let's have a parse print statement instead of parse input and that's going to be a parser that produces a statement and the way that um, we get a statement out of uh, a printer is that we're going to look for a reserved word from the lexa of print then we're going to parse an expression 
and we're going to return print statement of that expression. Nice and simple. Uh, parse input will be a parser that returns a statement and parse input is going to be uh, white space from the Lexa and then a parse print and then end of file and then we'll return that statement. So nice and simple we're getting all the way through and getting our statement out. Um, this is going to complain that there's no show derivation for statements. So let's just put that in. Now if we pop back down to the bottom our red line's gone away and so at this point we've taken our calculator and instead of calculating the answer we're going to have produced a statement uh, that we can then look at. So let's have a look. If we run GHC on the calculator then we can uh, feed it some input. Let's say print 5 plus 8. It's a print statement addition with two constants. Uh, so that's looking quite good. What about if we print bracketed 5 plus 8 should be the same thing. If we print 5 plus 8 times 10 then as you can see there is the multiplication which takes as one argument that addition and as the other argument the 10 so we're really starting to get somewhere now we can print these expressions out and they work um, let's now write something that can execute these exp uh, these statements so at the moment obviously the only statement is going to execute is the print statement and give us our answer back let's do that then so um, I'm going to put a little comment in to separate off our interpreter and we're going to have um, some state and the reason that we want some state is because um, all of our interpreting is going to be done within the context of knowing the values of things and into that we might be able to put some constants later or allow variable declarations and that kind of thing. So let's do that right now control.monad.state is our friend and uh, while we're at it let's import uh, data.map so that we can generate our state type and let's do that right now so uh, type um, calculator a where a is the return value is a state t where the state is going to be an m dot map from string to let's have a think how about string to expression uh, so that's an unevaluated expression which is good constants can just be a constant expression um, over io returning a that's a fairly standard state t again go and have a look at uh, episode four if you want to see something else using state t and the reason i put io in there is because it strikes me as a good idea if we can basically make our interpreter do all of the printing because then we can get rid of that uh, answer and error thing in calculate and we can extend ourselves a bit further and maybe even have our interpreter just map lines of input through the parser and straight into the calculator and combine the whole lot but let's not worry about that just yet so we want to be able to interpret expression which is going to be a calculator that returns a double and the reason for that is because obviously if we interpret an expression we want a value out however that doesn't help unless we have an expression to interpret so there we go and interpreting an expression of constant n is simply going to be return n. Really easy, uh, defined but not used, that's fine. Um, let's now have interpret statement which will be a statement that goes to calculate or nothing. And the reason nothing is because we're going to do all of our IO in the interpreter and there's no point therefore in messing about with anything else. So let's have interpret statement of a print statement of some expression 
and that will quite simply be print sorry I need to do don't I um, print of interpret expression expr and because we're in state t we need to lift io that um, I can't spell expression either uh, no instance for show calculator double arising from use of print haha -ha. we can't do it quite like that we need to go um, number is from that and then lift io of print n now it's complaining that interpret statement isn't used and that's fine because in the case of write n we can simply say run state t of interpret express uh, sorry statement n with m dot empty couldn't match expected type char with actual type blah expected string actual type list of pairs in a return type of run state t what have I fluffed up here uh, give me a moment and I'll go and fix this okay so uh, I've fixed the uh, problem a little bit of confusion between exec state t and eval state t and I've uh, changed main around a little bit just to uh, make it so that our calculate function is in IO and everything seems to operate properly uh, we should be able to test that with run GHC of our calculator <coughs> uh, print one seems to work one plus two non exhaustive patterns in interpret expression and uh, that's pretty obvious because well we've only supported constants so while I was waiting for uh, the previous chunk of video to encode so that I could start recording again I went ahead and wrote all of this code which is quite simply the interpreter for all the other kinds of expression that we have namely addition subtraction multiplication division modulus and unary negation if we run that and then we're starting to get things that we would expect if we just put an expression in then our error is a little bit nasty because I've called print which I really shouldn't have um, so let's fix that uh, do, 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 do this print here let's just call put stra lun because we don't have a new line at the end and there we go Expect unexpected seven expecting print because print is the only statement that we've written so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the ability to uh, define cons define some constants and use them so first up we need to add an expression type which will be an identifier and we need to be able to parse identifiers and they're going to come out of terms because terms are either going to be a parenthesized expression a number or an identifier and how do we get an identifier well the lexa should be able to give us identifiers um, doo -doo -doo. but obviously if we do get an identifier out we need to put it into um, something that will turn it into an expression so there we go let's in fact just tidy up our expression a little bit and try it out if we print Jeff then we get our non-exhaustive patterns because well Jeff is an identifier that we don't have now how about instead of m dot empty here we pass in default um, vars and let's define default vars it's going to be an m dot map from string to expression and that's going to come from a simple list of pi and um, for now 3.141 because I really can't be bothered to be any more specific than that um, that needs to be an m dot from list and there we go so if we run again and we print pi oh non-exhaustive patterns now we need to be able to interpret 
an identifier expression. Interpret expression identifier i do. We can get our var map out of the state we get. We can then look up that variable using uh, m.lookup. So we can say let uh, val equal m.lookup of uh, our identifier in var map. Now, what are we going to do if we don't manage to find our um, our value? Well, fortunately, because we're in I/O, we can have an error. Um, so for now, if we can't find it, then we're just going to error out. So instead of let val equal that, let's do a case that of um, nothing is going to go to fail unknown identifier i and just number is going to go to return number couldn't match expression with double when using functional dependencies well it can't be return number of course it's going to go to interpret expression there we go. So let's try again. Print pi now works. So we've now got some constants that we can use um, and we could add others. And in fact, I'm going to add some more before I upload, but you guys don't need to see that. And uh, next time we're going to add the ability to define expressions. And that means that we're going to be making sure that our state is a little bit more persistent and uh, so we'll be rewriting calculate and main just a little bit to make all of that happen. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, comment below with ideas and uh, look on the Git server to see the code as it is now plus a few more constants and uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye.